Hey guys, this is Daniel James and today I want to talk a little bit about um, Symphobia. Now in my previous videos, they were uh, specifically for a track. They were a look at how I did um, the music to a, an animation called Operation Big Eye. And um, since those videos, I've been uh, I've received quite a few emails and, and PMs on certain message boards. And one of the recurring questions was, how, uh, what do I think of um, Symphobia's strings? You see, because I layer, uh, I tend to layer Symphobia with um, LA scoring strings and sometimes East West uh, Quantum Leap Gold uh, Symphonic Orchestra. And um, so I thought I'd dedicate a video uh, showing specifically uh, Symphobia. Now, if I just play the track to you first and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Here it goes. And that was just a short little cue uh, for the purpose of demonstration. The, the scene I imagined in my head was a bit of a, a stealthy kind of action film where, you know, perhaps the main characters sneaking around or whatnot. And um, I'm not sure if you noticed there, but every single sound that you heard there was um, exclusively Symphobia strings. So um, I guess the best place to start would be um, the, uh, the reason this video is called uh, Custom Dystopia is because... Um, Right, firstly, let's load up this one. Uh, Symphobia has a part to their library called Dystopia where they uh, where they've like affected some of the sounds and created like these uh, you know these unique grungy sounds. And um, I thought I'd take a stab at that and uh, create some of my own sounds using the Symphobia uh, create my own multis, sorry, using the Symphobia uh, samples. And um, one of the most important things when you're doing um, like sound design, sound design scoring, which is what I tend to do, is uh, the the source audio that you're using has to be very, very good quality. You know, you have to have a lot of sonic, um, a, a lot of sonic quality in the actual recording for it to sound good. And Symphobia stuff's spot on. So uh, the first first track I've got here is called Pulse. And if I just move this out of the way here and show you what it's playing, solo it out. So this is the MIDI information, and this is what this sounds like. Now, obviously, that doesn't sound like strings, but uh, what I've done here is I've, as you can see down at the bottom here, I have... Uh, my harmonic maximizer, which is adding a little bit of um, bass to it, which isn't actually applying that much. Uh, and then I've got my uh, my favorite ping pong delay followed up by a simple delay. So if I turn these off, you can hear what the actual sound sounds like. Now, the, 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 the sound I had in mind for this track is I wanted a rhythmic pulse, which is why I've called this track Pulse. And... Um, what what that the way I decided to do it was uh, with delays because that that's the way I like to do my pulses. So I decided that what I wanted to create with this patch was a um, a stab, a single hit. And so what I've done here is uh, is I've taken the uh, low staccato strings and detuned them by an octave. And then what I've done is I've adjusted the decay uh, to make it short. What it would have been is something like this. And there's a lot more bass, but if you if you pull back this decay a little bit, you get more of a, a snappy sound. And that was to throw a little bit of bass in. And then this is probably one of the most important parts here, the uh, the pizzicatos, which is actually just playing pizzicato, and it's the low pizzicato. Oops. Now if you put that. So this this has got um, nothing changed on it except for the repetition is switched on, and that's followed up by another um, 
low staccato. So I've got two instances. I've got one here, one here, and this one is tuned up by 24. So that's two octaves. And that is putting this sound in, which doesn't sound like much. So I've tuned this right up and then I've set the decay really short. So it's just a little, did, little stab. Let me if I open this up. So I've just tightened this up to about 79 and turn into a little percussive, um, just a little, just a little sound to sit on top to give it a little bit of um, air on top. And then uh, this, this here, the, the cold leg note uh, patch is what I see is like the snap. Now what I've done to this one is actually a little bit different is um, I've, again, I've done the um, decay. I've brought it down a bit to make it snappy, but I've also put a little distortion, bit of contact distortion in. I mean, if I turn this down, it's not much, but a bit of, this just adds a bite to it. And you put them all together and you get, and what I've done there is I've filled out all the frequencies because I, I wanted that as full as possible so that when I turn on my delays, uh, those frequencies are being delayed. So as you can see on the ping pong delay here, I've set it to, um, let me just close that. I've set it so that it's taking most of the bass frequencies. And you get that nice, you know, just the, the low mids. And then if, if I turn on this uh, simple delay, you end up with the rhythmic pattern, which became the uh, the rhythmic pulse of the track. So that's the first part. The second one, I've got uh, a track called Bass Wobble. And this, uh, remember what, I, what I've done with these is I've turned them all into multis. I haven't saved this one yet. So I'd load these up and use them as individual sounds or bounce them down, freeze them, whatnot. Okay, so I've got this part here and it sounds like, I'm trying to just get it so I can show you the notes it's playing just here. Sounds like this. And the point of this one is to uh, just add as like a little, almost like a sting, but not that, not that strong. I just wanted a little bit of, a um, little bit of texture to go in with this part here. And then a little bit of texture. And what I've done with this one is uh, a little bit of detuning up on uh, string ensemble cluster and I detune that by two octaves. Again, you're not getting very much of a sound out of it. Just enough to throw a little bit of texture in. Then we've got Marcato. Uh, I'll, yeah, the Marcato here is detuned by two octaves. I wanted it to almost sound horn-like so that I could, uh, you know, uh, use the strings without, you know, having to dig into the horn patches. And then I've got Sordino. And now this one's a little bit different. It's uh, it's detuned by one octave, but I've also put a, a rotator on it. So you get that left, right sweep. Again, a sonic texture thing more than anything. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, fi and, and finally, this is the, um, this is the essence of the sound. It's uh, the string ensemble clusters and these are the short ones and they're detuned by two octaves. Now if I just put these up normal, you hear what they sound like. You take them down by two octaves, you get a sweepy kind of. Again, important to note that on this one, I've got distortion and the rotator again, but this one's, uh, this is on the fast rotator. So it's just wobbling side to side. And like I say, this patch, uh, the sole purpose of this patch was to add um, sonic texture. What, what I see a lot with um, with composition is people will, um, in other people's compositions, they'll write like, uh, and I, you know, I, I speak from experience as well. I, I used to do this a lot, is you would um, focus on just your, um, you know, your melodies and your harmonies and your rhythms. And you would leave it at that. Whereas I, I think it's very important that you actually add texture to the music, you know, just little sounds like this. It's a little sound that adds that oomph to the uh, to the overall sound, which lacks in quite a few tracks. And then finally, I've got a, um, this track's called Sub Boom, and uh, 
you could probably imagine what this is going to sound like. So if I just show you here, move this out of the way. Oh, just so that. Now the purpose of this patch was obviously to make a drum like sound. And this one was very easy to make. Um, this one is just uh, a pizzicato, low pizzicato. There's the bass sound. And all I've done with this one is I've uh, tweaked the decay sustain a little bit and I've just pulled the low pass fill, which was already on it. I've just pulled that down to cut off the lower frequencies. It would have been up here somewhere. And then I've just pulled it down to here so that it's only the subs coming through. Could probably a little, little bit more through than that. And then uh, I've just detuned it. And then with every sub boom, you always need um, you always need something on top. You need the clack, the crack. Sorry. Um, and what I've done is again, I used the uh, I used you know a technique I used in the bass wobble, and that is uh, sorry in the pulse, and that's using the the cold leg no patch, which is that snappy sound, which sounds like this. Not like that. Sorry, that's got band pass filter on it. Uh, just bypass that. So that's what the original sound was. So I detuned that by 12 and whacked a band pass on. It doesn't sound like much, but you put it in with the other one and it's the snap of a drum. Nice and simple. So um, what what I wanted to do there was show how easy it is uh, to create your own multis. All, what I, all I did was uh, load up an instance of contact four and then just built the patch with all these and then uh, like I've done here, I didn't do it on that patch, and then just saved it as a multi. So whenever I whenever I decide I want this sound, not that sound because that's silence. Whenever I want this sound, I can just load up this multi and it's there. And I can freeze that track. I can bounce it down. I can do whatever I like with it. I can even swap out the sounds perhaps with brass. But for the purpose of this video, I wanted to stick with strings. So there's uh, there's my multis that I created. And then um, what I've done here is augmented that with uh, some string effects and some string lines. So we just uh, take a listen to those. Here we go. And what I'd just like to point out, I mean, is there is I'm, I'm using Symphobia strings here and like people are asking, you know, what I think of them. I think if you need a library that kind of covers everything, I mean, you've you've heard I've basically built an entire scene, you know, a track with just the string section. There's no brass, there's no percussion, there's there's no nothing, there's no omnisphere, there's there's nothing else in this but strings. And if there's one thing that Symphobia has got and it's got and uh, you know that I think everybody uh, praises it for is it's got that sound it's got that kind of uh, it's got that film Hollywood game sound just built into the into the library which is fantastic so I hope you've um, I hope you've liked this I mean if I just quickly briefly go over what what patches I've got I've got um, so first off here so again I apologize for not naming anything um, here I have a tremolo patch, which I've uh, automated with the mod wheel. On the second layer here, I have, uh, which is up here for some reason, string ensemble staccato with piano. Now this patch is actually quite cool. Uh, whenever you play a low note, it, it doubles it up with a piano. Just play that for you, play it in. So it's uh, pre-orchestrated for you, that patch. Um, then on track uh, three, which over here, we have this sound, which is the um, the string ensemble sustain soft. These uh, 
this is ba- in in on this uh the strings are set up in ensembles so it's from the bass to the high notes and then it switches in between um at, you know good intervals so uh the soft patch is actually really soft dynamics which i actually use a lot more than the um the regular ones so you drag these down these i mean these these strings by themselves can carry a scene I mean, just by themselves, they sound fantastic. They're not in the way. They're, they're good to, to just sit under a scene. And then on, on track four, we've got uh, Spiccato Short, which sound fantastic. And if you've ever seen any of my other videos, uh, these, these Spiccatos end up in every single Spiccato passage I have because they've got that, like I say, they've got that, that, that sound with them. Uh, after that, we've got, uh, we've got, we're moving into what Symphobia's um, used for a lot and that is the uh, the effects which is worth the price by itself in my opinion let's have a listen let's have a listen <laughs> and for those of you who are um unaware of what the effects are they're pre they're pre-orchestrated pre-recorded um not loops but they're like sounds they're these uh effects and if you try to make these effects with within a, a sample library, you you you, you couldn't. It, it wouldn't sound right. Whereas when you've got them pre-recorded, like they are in Symphobia, they they add that extra sense of realism. So let's have a listen to the. Uh, this is. <laughs> they sound beautiful. That's uh, string ensemble clusters, and I'm using that to double up with, uh, with my piano up here. Adding that extra little bite of tension. Layer seven. Doop -doop -doop. Uh, cluster. Uh, the Cree dim means it crescendos, then it diminuendos. I probably pronounced that incorrectly, but uh, so it builds and then it quietens. And that that again is another one of those devices which is used for um, adding, you know, texture. Again, more of the clusters. This one's uh, the cluster tremolos, which I automated with the expression. And then uh, finally, we've got um, string crescendos. Not finally, because there's one after that. Fantastic. And then uh, on number 10, the, again, this would be like the fourth time is the cold leg no patch, which is the uh, snaps. I also, um, I also froze this track and then uh, reversed one of them and used it as a reverse sound so you get this. But when used in context. So yeah, I hope you guys uh, have, have enjoyed this little look. Um, I, guess, I guess the conclusion of this video is, uh, yes, I love Symphobia strings um, very much and I find them extremely useful. Um, like I say, the question was how, you know, how useful do I find these uh, by themselves without augmenting with other libraries? And to be honest, you you definitely can uh, get by with just Symphobia by itself. Uh, it never hurts to augment with other libraries. I mean, I do it all the time. In fact, you know, every track, I, I try to use as many different sounds as possible to make it sound as good as possible. But there's absolutely no, I mean, in my opinion, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using one library by itself especially when you can mangle the sounds like this. Sounds a bit like a clock, that sound. Do you not think? A bit like a clock. Anyway, um, so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little video. Um, I hope to do more in the future. Like I say, these these are like more like little experiments. And uh, yeah, I hope if anything, you've, you've learned something and I hope this inspires you to go out and try and make your own multis within um, Omnis, uh, not Omnisphere, within uh, Symphobia, if you own it, or within your other libraries, you know, just try and, try and be creative with things, you know? Well, that's the way I try to approach it anyway. So yeah, um, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.